Fair Bets is back. Another NFL weekend. Joined here by my co-host Jeff Schwartz. Sammy and Will will be here in, in a few to hop on the gambling group chat with us again. I'm a little bitter. Actually, I'm more than a little bitter. I'm a lot bitter. Uh, Why? Well, your Jets are going to the playoffs. No, they're not. But I am happy that they won. Like, like they, they, they were dealt. The, it's bittersweet because of what could have been. Yeah. Um, with the AFC not being what people thought the AFC was good, but yeah. I'm, I'm happy. The, 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 the coaches done a really good job, and they're playing hard. And so what are you so angry about? Your favorite team? I should have been three and one. Yeah, the Bengals lost. Was the Seahawks lost was bad. The Bengals, the, the Bengals had no business covering that game. I, here's the thing about last week. There, we saw the Niners go down, the Eagles go down, and then I, I lost with the Patriots with the safety as well. Oh, I should have been three and one. That that's worse than the yeah. Seahawks was. Yes. Max Crosby still double hand swiping everyone on his way to, to Mac Jones. Yo, literally the only guy the Raiders have on defense. Correct. Yeah, and he was doubled and yeah, didn't yeah. matter. Did not matter. And Mac Jones held the ball forever. It, the, yeah. It's the Patriots are in a bad way. Here's my question out of last night, NFL mm-hmm. weekend bear. Niners lose on the road. Mm-hmm. Eagles lose on the road. Mm-hmm. Bills struggle at home. Mm-hmm. Chiefs looked meh, right? Like eh, it's the Broncos. Went, yeah, went through the motions um, kind of deal. Dolphins had a blowout win. Lions won on the road. Mm-hmm. Does the Bengals, obviously, we just talked about one. They, they thought the Bengals are still kind of live, and we've kind of been down on them, but they're live. Does anything that happened last weekend, especially with the Niners and Eagles, kind of change your opinion about the NFC? Because for me, Niners, it does not. No. But the Eagles, I, I do slightly kind of downgrade them a little bit because they've been itching for that loss. Niners, it does not. It was a game that we, we talked about yes. here, and we saw it coming, and weather was weird, and you lose Debo when you lose CMC. And the well, – well, it's understandable, yeah. and you went against arguably the best defense yes. in the in the. Well, they, in they've allowed the least amount of yards the Browns defense has through five games. It's, they're since so, 1971. That's that's that's, that's fair. That's, that's good, yeah, it's good defense. It, it, that's a that's a good, that's that's a good unit. But I don't want to I don't want to over. What's the best way? I wasn't mass super super high like Super Bowl high on the Eagles, so like their struggles have not really yeah. surprised me per se. Uh, and I still have this image of Jalen Hurts struggling to throw a lot of times at Alabama. And I know he had a great year at Oklahoma and he had a great year. But like, but you're right. Something about the Eagles this year, despite them yeah. being undefeated going into that game, it didn't feel like they were yeah. as crisp and as clean and as dynamic and as clearly as dominant as, the, as they were yeah. last year. So part of it is the expectations are so high in Philly, right? Because of how they played last season. Mm-hmm. And a little bit of of their game reminds me of the expectations we have for USC on the college side, where USC has sort of played a bunch of clunkers but won, and they were playing Notre Dame, mm-hmm. and it just didn't go well. It was going to end at some point. The Eagles had played clunkers that they've won. They, they've won. The goal in the NFL is to win the game. But they were sort of itching for this game to happen, where you just turn the ball over too much. And then Lane Johnson went out the right tackle, and the offensive line couldn't block anymore. And he's out this week, I think, right? I don't know. He's a, he's a quick healer. He <clears throat> tends to come back quickly from injuries. He played last year with that groin injury. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they were itching for that loss. I think I just downgrade them a little bit because it feels like they're moving further away from the Niners. The thing about the Niners, though, we've been questioning whether Brock Purdy is for real and is he good, is he not good. Fine. But without Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel, he's not the same player. This offense Who is not the be? same. I know. But I'm just saying, like, if they're out a significant amount of time, we talked about this with McCaffrey's, um, you know, do you benefit the MVP? And I said, no, because he's going to get hurt. It does change the outlook for them if if those guys are out for a little bit of time, right? I mean, I don't know. As of right now, recording Thursday, injury status, we don't know for, yeah, I mean, for Sunday. All, I, mean, I heard they avoided serious injuries, and McCaffrey hoped to play this week. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, but do, it, yeah, do, you need, it, do you need him to go to Minnesota and win? I mean, I mean Brian Florence's defense is pretty good. Yeah, probably not. I don't think so, right? You just indoor, get out of there, just rely on the rely on the Vikings to shoot themselves in the foot and turn the ball do. over. And but how are the Vikings going to score without Jefferson? That's, that's the, the thing. The defense comes every. The Niners defense had Randy Gregory out there getting sacks for them last weekend. Oh, you, and you knew that was, as soon as they acquired him, you <laughs> knew how that was going to go. You knew yes. he was going to clean himself up, straighten himself up, and, and return to being a dominant pass rusher. The Chiefs traded for McCole Hardman. They had Frank Clark in the building this week for a physical. Give the band back. Does it change your opinion about the Chiefs at all if McCole Hardman's back and Frank Clark is back? It clearly helps. I, th- I think Mahomes and that offense yeah. having a 
a quick twitch kind of guy there who can, who, who can help them. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that will help them. Yeah. I'm, All right, sure, there. I'm sure McCall Harmon's happy to be back. I know. He had like four touches in New York, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Sign the guy, don't even play him at all. All right. Let's get to your bets. Not a lot this week. No, a lot, lot, lot of teams off this week. We're going, we're going quality over yeah. quantity. Yeah, exactly. Before we get to the gambling group chat, which is always a ton of fun. And then our best bets and our survivor pick. I'm still alive. I took I, I took the Texans. Well, Texans life. awesome week. Yeah, I took the Texans. All right, let's get to the first one here. Browns at the Colts. Colts are getting two and a half. Totals forty. Low totals this week. Colts are three and three straight up. They took a big L in Jacksonville last weekend with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. They're three and three against the spread. They covered in zero of their losses. The Browns are three and two. In five games, also 3-2 and two against the spread. Of the Browns, we know, we talked about just upset the 49ers at home with P.J. Walker, quarterback. Um, we know Anthony Richardson for the Colts out for the season now. Uh, he has shoulder surgery, so Gardner Minshew is rolling. And the Browns, I, as of taping, I, someone's playing quarterback. I, I don't know who it's going to be. Probably going to be P.J. Walker again, I would yeah, think. I would imagine, yeah. And, and that means the margin of error is quite slim for, yeah. the, for this Browns team that yep. defensively, you know, they're going to be great. I mean, it wasn't like P.J. Walker was, I mean, he was Okay, I guess if I'm being kind, I could say okay. Stefanski is their, their, their head coach and play caller is calling plays in Cleveland like he has a Sean Watson still. Like the end of that first half, just run the ball and go to half. It said strip sack. Like, what are you doing, right. man? Like, just use the use what you have Two picks and try to protect PJ Walker. Now you're on the road against a Colts team that is is good. Gardner Minshew, Gardner Minshew is one of those. He was terrible last week. He's name about Gardner Minshew. It's funny about P.J. Walker because Greg Olson mentioned this on the broadcast that that win for P.J. Walker gets him four or five more years in the NFL. It's absolutely true. Gardner Minshew was like okay as Jacksonville starter mm-hmm. like four years mm-hmm. ago. And the image of him is still, is he, he's not good. <laughs> I know you're back in the Colts here. I'm just saying like for people that think that the Colts are going to be good all of a sudden now because Gardner Minshew is in there, that's not that's not the case. No, it, it, this is more of, of, of a play on the spot. You're really? exactly right. I like the play. It's, it's a good and, play. And at least at least the Colts at home, you played the, the Jaguars tough in the opening week, a loss to the Rams in overtime in a game you very easily could have won. Uh, you, you beat the Titans. So I, I think back here and, and Minshew coming off the terrible game and um, the, the Browns coming off the high last week with a with game plan that you don't have a big margin of error. Um, I, I took the Colts. Yeah, I like it here. It's a good fate of P.J. Walker in the situation. All right, next one up right here. The last one for now. Falcons. Getting two and a half points at Tampa Bay. Total 37 and a half. Very low total here. Falcons are three and three. Only covered one of their six games. My own person. I hate, I hate betting on Falcons. Oh. <laughs> Tampa Bay is three and two overall. Also three and two against the spread. Tampa Bay just lost the Lions who went in there and, and dominated them. Both these teams, I wrote this in my notes, right? Both these teams are painfully average. That's a very good summation. I think we've seen that <laughs> with the Bucs. Like, the Bucs were throttled but last week by the Lions, yeah. throttled by the Eagles, early against the good teams that they played, and, and against the, the the bad and mediocre teams that they're, they're in. It. And this is uh, another bad or mediocre team with, with the Falcons. But, like, you hit on the, the, the number that the Falcons are ATS. Like, I've been a fade of the Falcons all year, yeah. and it's worked out well. But I like them this week. I, I mean, la- last week, and I, I know you got Desmond Ritter, and it, it's good with a with a young quarterback. It's going you're going to have those ups and downs. But it was the outgain uh, Washington like 402 yeah. to 190 last week. You had the turnovers, so if they, if they can just do that again, like I, I don't think. See, I don't think the I, I don't think the Bucks are, are any good at all. No, they're terrible. And, but it, Baker Mayfield's a quarterback. They're not. They're not injured. I can't. I, I'll put it to you this way: If you don't want to play the Falcons, fine. But there's no way I could be laying points here with Tampa. Are Colts and Falcons both teaser legs for you? W- would they be? Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Up, going up, three. Up, up through, up through the three and the seven. seven. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how, how who, the Brown Browns are going to beat someone by more than a touchdown? No. On the road with PJ Walker? No. I think they beat I the Bears so. by seven. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, they're, and the Falcons by six. Good I'm point. I'm with you on that. So that's well, it. There are a lot. There are a lot of a lot of those lines this week in the NFL yeah. where you can get teaser legs through the three, through the seven. I'm sure. So I'll take Chargers yeah. eleven and a half um, against uh, against the Chiefs too in the teaser leg. Um, all right, that's it, guys. Just two for now. Bear is on the Colts plus two and a half at home against the Browns, and he's on the Falcons plus two and a half at Tampa Bay. 
We'll have best bets later on. We'll have our survivor picks later on. We're still alive in the survivor. But right now, let's get to the gambling group chat. It's going to be the Bear, me, Will Hill, and Sam. And you'll hear, guys, Bear likes Arby's. He likes Arby's. <laughs> they need to be a sponsor. Because I haven't had it in podcast. three years. And here is Bear in the gambling group chat talking about football and food. It's two favorite things in the world. Listen. Work, work, and travel it with travel as well at one point this year. <laughs> football, food, and travel. That pretty much sums my life. Yeah, there you go. All right. Here's the gambling group chat. Back with the gambling group chat. Self, Sammy P, Will Hill, and Jeff uh, kicking around NFL slate. And it, it feels like this is a, a, a week, I know you could probably say it every week, where there's so many games that uh, are, are just a kind of a coin flip and a toss-up. But it feels like the Sunday night game is certainly the uh, – the main event, Miami going to the Eagles. The Eagles coming off that loss against the Jets where couldn't stop turning the ball over. Questionable decision there by Sirianni. It hurts to throw to give the, the Jets a chance instead of punting deep. I, I don't know what they were thinking, but as a Jets fan, I was happy to see my team walk away with the win. So Miami currently two-and-a-half-point dog at Philly. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting game there, Jeff. The worst part about the Jets win, by the way, is that Jets fans think you can make the playoffs. No, 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 no. And Aaron no, Rodgers coming no, back. He's throwing the no, side. No, he's throwing no, the no, side no, before no. the game, right? He's making it about no. himself as usual. Any any Rogers. sane individual no, you're making the knows playoffs. that they're not making yeah, the Zach playoffs. Zach Wilson's going to be in over like, you know, Justin Herbert and, and all these other. Because, yeah, the Jets are, are going to get like a plus four in turnovers every week. And, <laughs> yeah, that, that'll happen. Uh, I, I, guys, I, I think the Eagles are going to win this game and cover this game. I think we we've seen what Miami does really well and what they don't do well. And what Buffalo did in that in the loss that Miami had was they just punched in the mouth, right? Get punched in the mouth, punch in the mouth, physical, rush the passer. That's what Philly is right now. The injury concern with Philly is that they need some of their guys back to, to be as good as they can be. But offensively and defensively, they win in the trenches, right? They they punch teams in the mouth. Is Miami gonna withstand that punch in the mouth that they did not withstand well against Buffalo? on the road against a Philly team that's pretty angry about the way they played the last month. They have not been as clean. Their offense has not been as good. But the Dolphins' defense, by the way, hasn't played very well. So I think Eagles winning and covering this game, guys. I don't know if I'm on an island on this one, but I think Eagles bounce back big in this game. I like the matchup in the trenches for them. You know, Miami's interesting because when they're in their element and they're beating up on these bad teams, they look unstoppable. It's almost, and the, the comparisons have been made to the, the 2000 Rams where they're indoors, everything's perfect, the track is perfect, and they're just, they're bowing you to death. It, this will be interesting because it's, it's a pretty good defense, a pass rush, it's outdoors. So, look, it's a great game. We've gotten some stinkers, especially, you know, last week, the Sunday night game. I mean, Bills, Giants, we're still, uh, our eyes are still recovering <laughs> from that one. Uh, this is a great game. This is a hell of a game. I think it's a good, from a betting standpoint, I, I don't want to lay the two and a half. If I had to, I would. I, I just I like Miami on a teaser. I think getting them to eight and a half, what should be a close game, is probably the way to do it. You know, I, I never see really value in taking plus two and a half. Most games aren't going to land on one or two. So I think Philly probably wins. I think Miami's a good teaser like here. Awesome game, though. The only quarterback with more interceptions than Jalen Hurts this year is Jimmy Garoppolo. Garoppolo has eight. Hurts has seven. That's really been the biggest issue. Um, and the Eagles, I'm going to give Eric Eager, a friend of ours, a little prop here because he yep. was talking about this the doc was saying on twitter look the eagles have been playing the same game for a month it just finally caught up to them and I, I think you look at their red zone efficiency i was looking at this i wrote it up for fox last year the eagles scored touchdowns on 68 percent of their red zone trips that's pretty high this year it's down to 45 percent and again not the biggest sample size in the world but they are not turning those 20 yard and in in the six, they're either turning the ball over or they're kicking field goals. And I think you don't just flip a light switch with that. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that Miami is a lock because there are a lot of factors working against Miami in this game. And I hope the Dolphins win because your boys got the Mike McDaniel coach of the year ticket. I'm a little nervous, but let's not just act like Philly can just turn the switch on and fix this offense, which is clearly a little janky right now. Their quarterback has seven interceptions, seven touchdowns. And they cannot score in the red zone, and that's a problem. I, I was going to say another another bet that I know you have, and before last week it maybe looked a little shaky, was Dallas to win the, the NFC East. And you can still get the Cowboys at plus 140, uh, I see, on DraftKings to win the, uh, the NFC East. You look at the Eagles' next uh, eight games, got the Brutal. game against the Dolphins. You go at Washington, which, who knows, rivalry. Cowboys at home, at Kansas City, home Bills, home Niners, back to Dallas, Oof. at Seattle. Like, that's a, it, 
Does it, does it feel like a stretch or an, here where there's an opportunity for Dallas to, to, to make some, some, some hay or maybe it's a good time to maybe add up a little more uh, Dallas to win the division, Sammy? I just bet a little too early, I think, because it was funny. I remember we discussed this like a month ago, and I was like, when Philly gets to that five-game stretch, you just rattled it off where there's two Dallas games, Kansas City, Buffalo. That's going to be a stretch that they're not going to survive, right? Well, maybe not going to survive is a little bit of a stretch, but they can go two and three. They can go one and four in that stretch. The offense, again, the offense is not good right now. They are getting by because their defensive line is really good, and they can turn you over at these inopportune times. But yeah, I don't, I don't want to like go crazy. I don't want to go hog wild and load up on Dallas. I just wish I would have waited because I bet plus one ten a month ago in pursuit of this stretch, and now it's closer. You can get a better price. So yeah, I don't certainly don't hate plus one forty when I'm riding plus one ten. And while Philly has this tough schedule, Dallas has a fairly easy schedule. So if you want to bet Dallas plus 140, 150 now, whatever it is, you can probably come back because it flips again the end of the season. Uh, the Eagles, their last three games are pretty easy. I know it's two against the Giants, and Dallas has a tough stretch to end. So you know you might be putting yourself in a position where you can just ar- you know arbit where you got both teams at plus 150 because I feel like at some point Dallas is going to be favored in this division when Philly uh, goes through this tough schedule and maybe it flips again. So uh, you know w- when you bet it, sometimes just as important as what you bet. My favorite word in wagering, Arbit. Free money. There's nothing I like more than free money, Jeff. Of course you do. And bagels. I do like bagel. Good. I mean, growing I up, you said Lyle, Arby's. Nice, good in New York. You said Arby's, man. You said Arby's. Ar- a little, I go, you go, you go a little Arby's as well. A little Arby's roast beef and cheese with some seasoned curly fries. <laughs> Maybe a little half and half sweet tea on the side. We can do that. I'm actually I'm so excited. He, got. He's, he has not been this excited like the entire show. Actually, he's perked up when you talk about Arby's the beef fun, and cheese. The funniest the last time I had Arby's was I be, was was it was it 2020 when game day was at Alabama Auburn and I had a, I drove from Tuscaloosa to Atlanta because the because the connections were terrible. And I literally stopped at an Arby's for for lunch on the way there. And I, like so, three years ago is the last time I had Arby's. If Arby's does not does does not show up to the studio after we tape next week, then then they're not listening they're, to they're, it. Yeah, you know, Arby's are, show up. Yeah, here there, there's a, there's a good. It, it's funny. I'm actually going to see a a buddy of mine in in Columbus, uh, in his wife and daughter for for dinner tonight, and uh, he sends me a, te- a video message of her last night. We, of saying, as you want to go to dinner with Uncle Chris? Yeah, okay. And then he said the other thing she's she's like all he all she's doing is like yelling Arby's. We have the meats all night because I guess <laughs> I guess the commercial was on during whatever game that they were watching. So uh, yeah, Lucy, Lucy was running around Arby's. They got the meats. So uh, I know SVP would be happy with that uh, as well. Um, looking down the sked bat bag, we, so we we took a, a fast food detour there. So never a bad thing. I know, I, I know, never a bad. Are, are, who's who's taking the the Chargers plus five and a half this week? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a six, Jeff. Jeff. Because the, la- the 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 five times that Herbert has played against Patrick Mahomes, one time Herbert played and Mahomes was was sitting week seventeen. It's been three points three times. It's been a Charger six point win in overtime, and then Chiefs six point win in overtime the other way. Like this game is always the Chargers Super Bowl. I know they didn't play that that well on Monday. They're back on the they're not back on the road, but they're on the road. The, the home games are. But five and a half feels like way too many points for a game that Chargers treat like the Super Bowl each and every year. Sammy, go ahead and say it. The floor is yours. Game's going to be tied with four minutes to go. We all know it. We all know it. <laughs> it's literally, you know, you get rid of Phillip Rivers and you think like, all right, we can take that next step as a franchise. We could maybe control some games. We can have maybe a double-digit lead. That'd be nice, right, every once in a while? No, no. forget it. <laughs> but I, I think Jeff is onto something here. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the Chargers won this game outright. Like, they are so erratic. Like, they're good enough to win any game. But they're also erratic enough to lose every game, and that's that's why it has to be maddening. Like that's why that Chargers fan was losing her mind on national television because that <laughs> is that is Chargers kingdom in a nutshell. They are good enough yes. to win any game, but they can also lose any game. 
Yeah, a stat that I don't think is getting enough, uh, enough attention. Every Chargers game in history has been three points or less either way. So uh, this one's going to be three <laughs> really? points or less. It, yeah, I mean, look it up. Look it up. It's there. Um, it's a different Chiefs team, too. I mean, they're they're less offensive. They're more defensive. They're a little more conservative. This is not like the, the basketball on grass team we're used to. I know they put up a bunch of points against the Bears, but this is like think about the game last week against Denver where it's close to the vest. It's low scoring. Uh, so I think laying big points with them is probably not the way to go here. So, again, Every game's the same here. Ch Chargers usually have the lead late in these games, too. I mean, it, it, this is really, I mean, we joke about it, but these games are always the same. It's always the Chargers up by three or four late, and then, you know, KC steals the game. But getting to the Chargers, uh, getting to the Chiefs by a touchdown or more, I think is hard here. I like the points. Sammy, do you think we'll, we'll get a six here, or should I just take the five and a half now? Well, I mean, we did see a six earlier in the week, like Sunday it opened six. It looks like it's trending the other way. You know, you're seeing some fives offshore. So the other thing is, though, you're going to get that Kansas City avalanche. Um, not that the public really affects the market, but I, I would imagine that when we get to Saturday and Sunday, you're going to get more chief bets, especially chief money line bets. And that'll all roll over because it's an afternoon game. The books are going to need the Chargers to win outright. We know that. But I don't know that we get back to six, Bear. I don't think I don't know. It's tough to tell right now. I would say, though, as we look at the board, you know, it was six on Sunday, and now we're getting to five. So, yeah, I, I would I would interpret that as I'm not – I missed my chance at six, and I will have to uh, have to take five, five and a half or maybe lay a little juice to get it back to uh, – to, to six. All right. We, we, we've made the Atlanta Falcons have kind of been a, a show punching bag. Like how, how can anybody like every, it seems like they're the, they're the sharp side every week. They're the smart money side. Everybody loves the Falcons. That, that being said, I actually went into, I like the Falcons this week. Um, I went into reasons with Jeff before, like you, it, it, as much of a joke as we make about them, they did outgain Washington, what 400 to Four, like 420 to 250 or something last week. The quarterback sucks. So congratulations on like, I mean, it, but what's funny is Falcons fans complaining about that, but then week one, the exact same thing happened in reverse where the Panthers had like 400 yards, but were minus three in turnovers. The Falcons had 13 first downs in week one and won the game. So it just comes around sometimes the NFL where you, the problem with the Falcons is that the quarterback stinks. Like that's the problem, right? Like their quarterback yeah. stinks. And when your quarterback sucks, you're not going to be a good team. Plus like, again, I mean, they're, they're, they're just okay, even if with like a decent quarterback. Uh, the Falcons to me are a team each and every year. Guys, I'm sure you have one team like this where you just never get any of the wagers right. You just never bet on them. Like I never bet for the Falcons against, I never bet Falcons against because they're the one team that I get wrong every single year, every single weekend. I mean, I, I just I just can't take, can't lay two and a half with, with Tampa. I know Tampa is one of those teams that it seems like uh, the, the, the when they play a good team like they did last week and with the Lions, they kind of get exposed. And uh, when they play a, a mediocre to bad team, uh, they show up. But I, I just, I just can't lay two and a half with Tampa. I, I, I took the Falcons two and a half. Do you hate that bet, Will? I don't like it just because I don't like tank, taking two and a half because I might be able to get a three. I don't know if we'll get a three here, but I, I agree with everything else you guys said. I don't understand the Ritter thing at all. It's not like they picked this kid like seventh in the draft and they have to give him a chance to fail. I mean, they took a flyer, what, third round, I think 75th, 76th pick in the draft. It's not working. Move on. Heineke's a good backup. Uh, we talked about, you know, who could the Vikings trade Kirk Cousins to? Maybe you go down that avenue. I don't understand this loyalty to Ritter whatsoever. So in terms of this game, I, I would lean Tampa here. Um, I, but man, the, the NFC South, though, is just um, you don't have to bet every game. The NFC South, this, this is one of these divisions. I mean, they're probably going to be an eight win, nine win division winner and, and be a what four or five point underdog at home against probably the NFC run, uh, NFC East runner up that wild card weekend. So uh, nothing for me. Atlanta's a good teaser leg. And I, I, I guess, you know, if you like Atlanta, see if you can get a three, but nothing for me. Last week, we were telling you about. Cleveland and San Francisco, and it was an NF we saw it coming a mile away. And once that number got to, to ten briefly, and then nine and a half, it was it, 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 you just you just knew what was coming. You've seen it so many times. PJ Walker wasn't great. The, as we saw, Jim Schwartz and the Browns defense is legit and real. It took wind and a couple of injuries to San Francisco and Brock Purdy to struggle with the win and two missed field goals in order for for Cleveland to get there, but they did get there. So, of course, this week, Cleveland's going to go on the road. As I destroy my microphone there for those who are watching, we'll, 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 we'll get it back in position. We'll be good. There we go. 
moving my arms around too much, but of course Cleveland's going to go on the road to Indianapolis this week. <laughs> as, as, my, as my mic continues to fall, Cleveland's again. on the road to Indianapolis thank this you, week. Thank guys. you, Jeff. And 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 the, and the Colts are playing Gardner Minshew, and the Browns are playing someone a quarterback. That's probably uh, not Deshaun Watson. Mike, Mike, there you Mike, go. Mike, so my summary is done. Mike, right? Mike microphone escapades for uh, for nine hundred, <laughs> but but of course the Colts are going to going to beat the Browns this week, right? How the league usually goes. I mean, this Watson thing's interesting because we don't have any clarity. I mean, he's, he's week to week. Remember a few weeks ago, we thought he was going to play that week, and then you know he's out. It's it could weird, be isn't it? Like, like, like it's very is there strange. something else going on? It's very strange. It really because it sounds like he's been cleared, and it's just they're sort of. Uh, I think the Browns as a team are putting it on the player, like, "Hey, we've cleared him. It's up to him. He doesn't really want to play." So it's a it's an interesting situation. It's you know it's too bad because they what look at it like, for? "Hey, we have the rest of the team the exactly, team. and we traded all this for this guy and to put us over the top. We got the rest of the team. We got you know that that's a Super Bowl roster. That's a legitimate Super Bowl roster. <laughs> you know when it's healthy with that defense, but without Watson, it, it, it's not without a, an elite Watson. It's not so. Uh, not sure what to make of this. The, the way the league goes, you know what. It's probably going to be a close game. Colts, Colts probably win. It's just that's the nature of the NFL. I actually bet Cleveland. I got them at sixteen to one, fifteen to one to win the AFC. I took a took took a shot with that, which figured figured why not? Even if they're even if they're a wild card, I think the type of football that they play can get through uh, the AFC. And like we talked about, the Chiefs have they're not the offensive juggernaut that they are. The Bills we saw Monday night clearly a flawed team. So. AFC is certainly certainly wide open, Sammy, isn't it? It certainly is. And I want to talk about some of these totals here. I mean, good Lord. Are these Iowa-Wisconsin games? We got 37. <laughs> we got 37 and a half, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, I'm seeing. I, like, I understand it because offense has been atrocious across the board. Touchdowns are down. Uh, receiving yards are down. Everything offensively is down. But – Eventually, there's going to be that regression. I mean, granted, there are some injuries that have to, to do with it. You know, Vegas and Chicago is the backup quarterback. Well, it could be Aiden O'Connell and Tyson, however we say his last name in Chicago, who's the most popular guy in town now because he's the backup quarterback. But at what point do we look at these totals and go, I just have to go over? I have to go over 37. I have to go over 37 and a half. I have to go over 39. Like, that is not a lot of points, guys. And with the way that officials throw flags and try and take over these games with PI and defensive holding and all that, eventually there's that regression where we get some overs. I know the unders have been great, but that doesn't last all season. And eventually there comes a time when these totals get too low. And 37 in an NFL game in 2023 is too low. Not to say that I love the over, but there will be that wave where these low numbers are going to get destroyed and you're going to see a nice stretch of these overs in the 37 to 43 range. And this might be the week. And I will, I know you're probably dying to jump at the bit here. Cause you, this was something you were talking about earlier in the week as well. Yeah, I just I, I don't think the league loves the idea that these games, you know, Buffalo, New York is 14 to nine or whatever it is on a Sunday night. So I think that Sammy makes a good point. You start to see some flags on the defense just to get like people like points. People like their fantasy points. People people don't want to sit here and, you know, pitchers doing in their fantasy games. So, um, again, that's a little bit of conspiracy there. But I, I do think there's some uh, some aggression coming to the overs. And, you know, sometimes the, the totals get too low. I think we went through this. Uh, NFL preseason the last couple of years where the narrative is like all oh, these games, it's not even a narrative. It's the, it's the truth, but it became so public. Hey, these games are so low scoring. You got to go under, you got to go under. And eventually you just make the unders too low. A uh, hall of fame game was like this too, where it's like, it's just very hard to stay, uh, you know, under the, the low thirties, mid thirties in an NFL game. It's just, you, you fall into 40 points, whether it's, um, you know, flags, whether it's pick sixes, defense, look, the defenses can score too. Bad quarterback play can lead to points that way. So some of these totals are just too low. I agree with Sammy. So it's so funny you brought up the Hall of Fame game, and I was thinking back. I was in Australia, and I was actually at the casino in in Sydney, the Star Casino, firing in a bunch of cross board parlays on the on the tab machine during the during that Jets during that Jets Brown game. And and as I sit here now, the Aces win last night has me live. However. I need the Astros to come back and win the World Series. So I'm, I, I did not expect an NLCS without either the Dodgers or the Braves. And that's what we have. So I had, I just had Dodgers, Braves, Astros. So I need the Astros to come back to, to keep me live for the, uh, for the NFL. But we got, um, we got Spain in the Women's World Cup through. All the awards are going to come through. 
Uh, we got uh, Djokovic to win the 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 U.S. Open, and uh, we got um, the Aces and the Aces. So yeah, night. we got that. So yeah. anyway, so we need the Astros, and then we have Forty uh, ers Chiefs, Cowboys, Browns. I think in the NFL, maybe one more. I might be missing a team. Hmm. So, yeah. That's all one That's parlay. That's like a CBS ticket. <laughs> Yeah. You say it's a nice seven leg, seven leg uh, parlay. It was great. So yeah, you you mentioning the Hall of Fame game, I t- took me down a trip of memory lane. Just <laughs> sitting there at a kiosk, just just like you go to go to Waterbury or wherever and sit in front of that sugar house kiosk and jam the kiosk. I I sat there for like three hours on an off day and just had to watch the Hall of Fame game and started firing in uh, parlay wagers. One team that I did do not have in the Super Bowl leg of that parlay are the Detroit Lions who suddenly seem like they are be- rapidly becoming uh, America's team. Uh, very, uh, they, they, the odd, uh, the, Will, you were on this a couple of weeks ago, how the price to win that division was way too low, and it probably is still way too low. But now we're seeing Jared Goff be a popular MVP bet. Uh, we're seeing this team uh, maybe be deemed a Super Bowl contender. However, Will and, and Sammy and Jeff, I'll start with you. Maybe a few too many injuries now to, to maybe a little, yeah might snowball a little bit. Are, are, are they? We we know they're going to win that division. Are yeah. they really a Super Bowl contender? I don't think so quite yet. Um, you know, it typically takes a couple of years for a team like the Lions to win Super Bowl games or even get to the Super Bowl. Right? I mean, even Patrick Mahomes he hasn't like, been in the we, playoffs in like in however, even we saw Patrick Mahomes did not win in his first season. It just sort of takes some time. They're very well built. I, I love the way they're built. They're physical. They're good in the trenches. Jared Goff is playing well. They have a lot of like everything. The pieces are all good. But do I see them winning a home playoff game, going on the road to Philly or San Francisco and winning uh, in the NFC Championship game? Probably not. Bear. I mean, probably not. I, I, it doesn't mean they're not. They they couldn't do it. But in sort of year one of of in the playoffs, the games ramp up. The tempo ramps up. The speed ramps up against a veteran team who's do, kind of been there before and done that before. I don't have them quite that level yet. Uh, Will, do you see them as a team that can that can win the NFC? I, I don't know that their secondary is good enough, but they're really, if you look at their schedule, them getting the one seed is really not impossible. It's a tough game this week against the Ravens outdoors, golf maybe in some shaky weather. But if they could ever win this game, look, San, San Francisco's got some injuries. Maybe you know the, the Eagles and the Cowboys beat up on each other. Those teams have tougher schedules than Detroit. So... I'm not there yet. I do think they're legit. Like I, I would probably put their ceiling at like an NFC championship game. Again, if you're in the NFC championship game, you, you could win it. But to me, like final four would, would be their, their sort of upside. But um, I think the, the big story here is the bartender won for his last one. I was with the bartender last week. We, the bartender <laughs> might start having to charge for these picks. The bartender's on fire now. Yeah. He's won two in a row. So that's, wow. that's a big thing for him. He's uh seven and nine this year. Will did say last week, though, he's like, the bartender's right this week because the Bucks stink. And if you look at this Lions schedule, yeah. there's a lot of stink on it. Let's have that conversation. Okay, they beat Kansas City on trophy night, which is always a weird night for the home team, putting up the banner and all that. But they beat the Chiefs. That's a good win. The last four games, the Lions have beaten Atlanta, Green Bay, Carolina, and Tampa. Blech! I mean, those teams are horrible. All of them. Maybe Green Bay's okay. Maybe but the, the other Bay ones are horrible. Of pigs. Those those like, teams oh, suck. suck. So we'll give them credit we'll for weekend, being right? what, five and one. Yeah, we'll learn a lot. We'll learn a lot. They play Baltimore this weekend, and then in two weeks they play the Chargers. We will learn a lot about the Lions when they face Lamar and Justin Herbert. I, so might, someone might have a strong opinion here on uh, Lions Ravens coming up in the uh, in the following best bet segment. Just a. It's called the T's. Oh, T's. Yeah. Do they have that market though? Can, can Ought to be I, the one seed. That might that might be one to look at because, like like Sammy said, the path is easy. These other teams might beat up on each other. I'd be curious, like odds to get the one seed. I know they have these in other sports, other markets. That might be one to look at if they have that. The the, the, the one the only thing I would say about that, and I know the Niners have the injuries in the schedule, but like that's mattered for the like in the last couple of years. The fact that the Niners have had to go on the road and play that extra game, like. I get the sense that they're going to do everything that they can to get that one seed. So it will be interesting to uh, to see. Um, everybody's survivor pick, I'm assuming this week, is going to be Seattle uh, <laughs> up to up to eight at South Point. Will and Sammy, those in the uh, in the, in the Vegas period, 
South Point uh, laying, laying, giving, making it eight, not seven and a half there. I had Seattle last week. And was, they should, they should, have should, have, should, have, should have at least yeah. covered, if not won the game outright. And, and, and Arizona, I think, suddenly is turning into the team that we all kind of thought they might have been before. Remember, it was like, oh, no, maybe the Bears are really the team that we thought the Cardinals. The Cardinals have kind of been poo-poo the last few weeks, especially in the second half, inability to score. And with the injuries that they have now, uh, Will, I know you, you were going back and forth this week as well on, on the text about the Cardinals' win total still somehow with four and a half. And we, we were like, how does this team get to five wins? Yeah, the one thing that gives me concern, Murray is back at practice. I can't imagine they would play him. What's the motivation they to get to like him. four or five? That's what I'm thinking. But the, the report is like, you know, he's not going to play this week. At week, week eight would be the earliest. I, I don't see it. Um, again, four and a half wins. I, I would have a hard time seeing them get to five here. I mean, they're they're one in what one in five, and their next three games at Seattle, where they're a big underdog, and then Ravens, Browns. One of those is on the road. Uh, the schedule is tough, so they're motivated to lose. They have a tough schedule. They're sitting here at one win. I think you know it was Denny Green who was the Cardinals coach said they are who we thought they were. And that that's kind of who Arizona is. I think that Cowboy win was like, wow, we were all wrong about this team. Maybe we weren't so wrong because they just, they can't seem to do anything in the second half of these games. And they played well against the Rams the first half, second half, they got blown out. That's become a theme here. So I still think this is probably the worst team in the league. Sammy, any, any worries about laying North of a touchdown here with, with, with Seattle coming home off, off of that, of that loss in Cincy seven, seven and a half. And, uh, actually, I see a seven still at Circa, so there, you shop around for the best number. But I don't know. I you, you you want you want to lay that many points here? I I mean, you could lay you can lay some seven in some places. It's juice minus fifteen, minus one eighteen. Obviously, shop around. Always lay seven instead of laying seven and a half. I I am not scared to lay it against Arizona, against you know Chicago in a couple weeks when they're big dogs. New England is another team. I know like three weeks ago, we all had a show bet that still looks good. I think we bet the Bears under, what, six and a half? And that looks like it's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, New England is four <laughs> and a half right now. New England's four and a half. Is New England going to win five football games? There, There's a conversation no. we should have. Like if they get absolutely knocked out this week, let's say Buffalo comes into Foxborough and wins 31 to six. How many games does New England win? Because they will literally have nothing left to play for. Everybody will quit. Belichick yeah. is clearly defeated. Mac Jones sucks. The offensive line is horrible. They can't run the ball. They have eight touchdowns in six games. They are pathetic. And yet, because of Belichick, we still have a win total of four and a half because Bill will figure it out. The hell he will. No. They are horrible. Yeah, they, they're, they're really bad. And, and Jeff, we, we, before the show, we were going through, and I, I was looking to see like odds of like to have the worst team, worst yeah. rec record in the league. Like you can still get them at around plus 750 or so to have the worst record in the league. Now, are they going to be bad enough to where the, the Panthers win a couple of games and the Bears win a couple of games? And uh, maybe, maybe not. But is it worth plus yes, 750? Yes, it is. Sammy mentioned it, right? Is that. They have, there's nothing to play for. Like like the Panthers, you could make the case, right, with Bryce Young, brand new quarterback. They just switch offensive coordinators. Like th there's a little bit of hope there, right? Br Bryce plays better. They have a young offensive line. The, the, the offensive line plays better. Like they win a few games. They're in a bad division too, right? What, what's the case for New England? If, if it's, not, it's not Bailey Zappi. It's not any of the bad wide receivers playing better. It's not the offensive line playing like they don't they're two best defensive players out for the season like there's no there's nothing you could point to and say this is the reason why this team would play better in a very tough division yeah they have the jets week 17 i think like that that, that to me is the only game i look at the schedule but yeah that's that that might be a win right because they dominate the jets now so many years and and the, and the belichick thing look it, it's sammy i i was one even a couple weeks ago I think I, I think I took them at home against uh the saints because i said to myself look it's belichick right like there's no way they they got blown out. It was 38 to three. I forget even who get who it was. They're coming back home now against the Saints. Like there's no way that they're gonna lay another egg. And they did. I think a lot of us that sort of and I still respect Belichick, best coach of all time. I think they're sort of off the Belichick thing now, right? Like clearly, the magic of of him and his ability to coach his team is not what it used to be even just like three years ago. And so I'm off New England. Like I'm not on New England anymore. I'm, I'm done wagering on them ever, maybe against them from now on. But like, it's very clear that 
whatever Belichick the spell he had over his organization is no longer working. It's not it's not there anymore. And I think and he's done after the season. I think it's very clear that how about he won't this? Be there next season. After they lose, after they get throttled by Buffalo, they go to Miami next week and they're one and seven. How many of those guys in yeah, that locker room yeah, still give yeah. a damn? How many? Uh, and they never win in Miami, anyways. And like they don't win in Miami. Like I, I think New England's an interesting situation because if they have the the the, the first pick, obviously they're going to have a new coach. Um, I, I guess I don't think Belichick's going to get to have Caleb Williams or, or, or Drake May. Like, what do they do with, with with the coach? I mean, look, Lincoln Riley has has not said no to the NFL. People are asking him about it. He's been saying like, yeah, you know, the the schedule's pretty good. The offseason's pretty nice. I mean, is there a a package deal at some point for Lincoln Riley to go to Chicago? Or go to New England, or go somewhere else to be the head coach with Caleb Williams somewhere. I'm curious if that if that ends up happening. There's no market for that, obviously, but just kind of an NFL thought I've had for for the last couple of weeks. If you guys were odds makers, what would you make like a three way line? Belichick is coaching the Patriots next year. Be- Belichick's coaching another team next year. Be- Belichick's just not coaching at all. What do you think? Like the favorites there? What, what would be a fair? Line? I, I wish somebody would post a market. That'd be fascinating. Not not coaching not coaching next year yeah. would be. Would, would he'll be, be on my, TV somewhere. My my yeah, favorite. He'll be doing TV next year. Is my guess. I, I would have favorite not coaching. Uh, the longest shot would be coaching the Patriots. Yes, he's I, not going to be back. Yeah. In Interesting. Look, look. If if he wants to, I think if he wants to coach, you disagree. Next year, I just I don't know that he wants to go out. I don't know. That's why I think it's an interesting. Like, would he would he want to go out like this? Would somebody with talent would a job open up and could he like pivot do what Brady did? Where hey, I'm going to go coach the Chargers and I'm going to show everybody like I can win without Brady. I, I don't know. I think it's fascinating. But he he is what 72, 73. I just I mean nobody really knows him well enough to know where his head's at. I just I, I do think it's a fascinating conversation. Uh, and I think he's you know what 20, 30 wins away from Shula. It's not like he's close to like the the, the so ultimate. It's probably right. three years, right? Though, but here's the thing. But here's the thing, Will, about him going to the Chargers, is who? And I think this is an option for him to coach somewhere else. But but you have to say to Bill, like Bill, we're doing the personnel and you're doing the coaching. Right. Like that I, to me, that still works. Like I, like I, like I think if you tell Belichick, okay, let us handle personnel. And of course, you can have a say in how we do some things, but let us pick the players, and you coach the players. I think Belichick can still be a successful coach if that's if if that happens. But right now, the team sucks. This is the team that he has built, and they stink. It's his roster, and he can't coach somewhere else next season and have personnel control, in my opinion, because it's not going to the same thing's going to happen. He, he has a track record now over the last four or five years of not bringing good football players. No, 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 he doesn't. Certainly he's not in the running for coach of the year. I mean, people are talking about like coach of the year, like assuming it's going to be either either Campbell or or, or McDaniel. I, I don't know. Doesn't it, doesn't it feel like there's a path for D'Amico Ryans or even if, if the Jets like somehow get to nine and eight, like for Robert Sala? Like, oh, the Jets in the playoffs again? We're no, I did not say the Jets were going to be in the playoffs. Jets in the playoffs again. I did not say the Jets were going to make Nine wins in the AFC? Eh, probably not, right? Probably not. Probably not. Okay, all right. But like... Like I don't think it's a show. Like like Campbell and McDaniel have good teams. Yeah. Like the, the Texans and the Jets are not like loaded with talent, and then the quarterback situation with the Jets. Like it, it's just it's just it's strange because like it, it, it's like a double edged sword. Because if you have if you're a good coach and you have a good team, it, it's like uh, it's you're a good coach because you have a good team. So it's like are you are you underestimating the job Campbell and McDaniel are doing? The fact that the media and the fans love both of these guys, like, th- does it feel like it's gonna be McDaniel or or or, or Campbell, or like, do you think that someone like Ryan's or I, so can win? If they can give it to Dan Campbell or giving it to Dan Campbell, like you know the, the football guy, like I, I think that he's if if they're as good as we just talked about, right with the schedule, guys, I think I think it'd be his his to lose if they end up with the one seed. Sammy, any thoughts on Coach or Dow? I hope it's McDaniel. I will take the boys out to dinner and the whole crew <laughs> if McDaniel wins. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, what about what about hey? How about a long shot at John Harbaugh at thirty to one? I, I don't think that's the worst idea yeah. in the world. They've clearly overcome a lot of adversity on the offensive side of the ball. J.K. Dobbins is off for the year. They've had some receivers go down. They always have like line issues on the offensive side. This guy, all he does is win. And if the Ravens go and they should be undefeated, and four, I mean that. Look, I mean at thirty to one, you're asking me for a longer shot. It's not Steichen, it's not Peterson, it's not Sala. It would be John Harbaugh, thirty to one. Now, is it going to happen? Probably not. But if you want to go down the board, I don't think that one on Baltimore is a bad bet. 
I think McDaniel's the rightful favorite. If and I, I thought this with Dable last year. If you just listen to the national media, and one of the first things they say is the coach, and, and that's what you get with the Dolphins, where like in a lot of ways he's the star of the team. Where it's like, oh, when people talk about the Dolphins, it's this Mike McDaniel offense. Like people don't go two sentences without men mentioning McDaniel. So I do think he's the rightful favorite. I don't see Campbell as much. They were minus money to win this division. I don't feel like they're overachieving. Usually this is like an overachieving. A, a, look, it's coach of the year. Who does the best coaching job? So I think McDaniel's the rightful favorite. Best bang for your buck, I think, is Ryan's, though. I think, look, he's he's uh, taken over that culture. It's been a losing team, a losing culture. He's turned around the defense. He's gotten something out of Stroud. So Ryan's probably the best bet here at, at the number. I think, what, 9-1? to one. That's probably the best bang for your buck at the moment. Andy Reid, one of the best coaches of all time, has never won coach of the year. Mm-hmm. Look at it right now. How's that possible? We have a Jason Garrett. We have a Matt Nagy. Um, <laughs> we have a, we have a two Ron Rivera's uh, with the Panthers. We we have a a, Mar- a, a, a Mike Smith with the Falcons. Um, but a Schottenheimer, Lovey Smith, but no no Andy Reid ever. I love what we're talking. We're saying if you're a good coach and you got a good team, you're a good coach because you got a good team. Even Belichick has got two of them. Oh, here's Andy Reid. Oh, sorry, 2002. He won one in Philly. Zero in Kansas City though, and all they've been is the best team in the NFL since he got there. It's crazy, huh? It's interesting. Yeah. Anything we haven't covered out there, guys, on this wonderful... I have one more. Go one more? Yeah, Rams to make the playoffs. Have you guys... It's still plus money right now. Have you seen the rest of the NFC Conference right now? Like, like this is is who the Rams are basically up against. Um, So, Eagles and Cowboys, right? Those are playoff teams. Lions are a playoff team. Some NFC South team and the 49ers, right? So, this is... Matt Stafford and Sean McVay are fighting for a playoff spot against... Desmond Ritter, Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, the beat-up Vikings right now, Jordan Love, and Sam Howell. The Rams are getting in the playoffs, yep. right? I mean, it's Sean McVay and, and Matt Stafford. Like, they're going to get in as a seven seed. It's still plus money. It was plus 115 this morning. I bet it this week. They're three and three. I'm not even sure the Rams are, like, good, per se. I mean, Matt Stafford's having a really good season. I don't, I, I don't know what they do best under other than, I guess, the quarterback being good, which is important. But to me, Rams make the playoffs. I know it's probably not the same number you would get seven weeks ago, but I took it this week at plus 115, I, and I like it. I can get behind it's that. It's funny because... Totally. I did. You sent that text, Jeff, and and I I did exactly what you did, where you start counting the playoff teams with your fingers, and it's just it's hard to get to seven fingers. It's just <laughs> you're like, wow. There's a, all right. We'll give Seattle a spot. We'll give the NFC East loser a spot. It's hard to get. To, I started to look like Washington plus three hundred. Um, this really this bet is if Stafford can stay healthy for seventeen games. If Stafford's healthy, you're in good shape here. That I think it's a good bet at plus money. And they have road. And they have a road game against Green Bay in November. A road game against Arizona Thanksgiving weekend, and they got a road game at the Gi- at, at the Giants. So those are three nine wins probably does it right in theory. In theory, yeah. you should probably like if you're getting road, you're playing teams on the road. Those are three teams that you want to play on the road. So, yeah, I'm good with it. I like. It. I think they'll beat Pittsburgh this Thank week too. That's a, that's a winnable game. It, it is. I mean, that Pittsburgh offense is is just atrocious. And then you got you got Dallas next week, but that's. They can beat Dallas. What do you, Dallas is every week. You don't know what to expect from them. I mean, you sort of do. They're not. They're going to have terrible clock management decisions, and they're going to do something dumb on offense. And like the, the Cowboys are untrustworthy. You got the Browns at home, and yeah. who knows? You got the Commodes at home. Another in a, in a playoff eliminate. It's yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find we're gonna find the best number on this. We're, we're not group betting it though. That has not no, been no, good no, for no, us. No, we're no, individually no, no. bet it separately you, at our own times quietly right by ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for I'm gonna look for the best number when I get to Laguardia here. Okay, and, good. Uh, figure it out. All right, gentlemen. As fun as as fun as it always is, much appreciated. Have a great weekend. Until next week, Sammy P, Will, Jeff, and Bear. Group game, group bread. Always fun to catch up with the with the, with the guys uh, for the gambling group chat. Uh, kick around a, a lot of stuff and from futures to. And and I and I hope everyone enjoyed my uh, my Arby's and uh, review, and my uh, parlay slips and all the, all the wonderful things that I, that I have going. So, yeah, uh, good times, good times for you last week. By the way, yes, excellent job, Houston Texans. Survivor. Yes, it's great. Yeah, that was, a, loved, that was, yeah, a, was a good great, one. Yeah, a, 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 great, a great poll. You uh, you create a little positive equity for yourself. I love it. Yeah, I which, which, which was great. So. And this week it seems like there's an obvious pick. With the uh, with Seattle, like the Cardinals, we, we, as we just talked about on the uh, on the group chat, like it feels like they are kind of 
becoming the team that we all thought that they were before they went, oh, they play hard. They're in every game. Well, actually, it hasn't been the case the last couple of weeks. So Seattle has to be the top player. The defense has played well. Clearly, the, uh, the the red zone offense was a problem last week in Cincinnati, notably Geno and his inability to get rid of the ball. Yeah. But this is a game at home now. Seattle has to have. I'm guessing most everybody has used the Bills by now. Obviously, if you haven't, yeah. I would still use them against the Patriots. Uh, that's that that's a no brainer. So, Seahawks, Bills, the 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 two obvious ones. However, if you're looking to zag when everyone yeah. else is zigging and, and kind of like how you were last week and not use one of the uh the, the popular picks maybe you take a look at atlanta i know you hate using a road dog um, yeah. against tampa maybe you take a look at the rams at home against the, the steelers i know you, you mentioned them about the rams to yeah, make the playoffs the I and mean, obviously, if they make, if they're looking to make the playoffs, that's a game a that you'd need to win. It feel it feels very coin flippish for a lot of these games. So, uh, like you can't take Kansas City this week, in my opinion, because the Chargers. No, the, you playing, you uh, can't take any game involving the Chargers. So I think Seahawks have to be. I mean, unless yeah, Seahawks it, probably unless, have to unless be. you have the Seahawks and the Bills. And you want to go Bills because you know that taking Buffalo right Seahawks, Seahawks will have probably half the pick in the pool. And if the Cardinals do show up and pull an upset, you're I mean, do you do you, do you back the Browns? I mean, not the Browns, the Colts. <sighs> nah, I couldn't do that. I like the Colts, but I couldn't keep Philly. I still have, so I think I think Seattle, you knock out Seattle, then I'd still have Kansas City, Philly, San Francisco left. Um so Baltimore left. Yeah, Baltimore could be an option this week too. They could. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I want to say that if I could, I could get Seattle out of the way now, I feel like you take Seattle, right? Yeah, I, I won't argue with that. We'll take Seattle. I like it. All right, I'm going with Seattle. There we go. Perfect. Done. Done. All right, let's recap Bears wager so far before we get to our best bets of the show. So far, Bears a Colts plus two and a half at home. Colts with Gardner Minshew, the Browns with presumably P.J. Walker quarterback, and you have the Falcons plus two and a half on the road at Tampa Bay in a game that I'm just not going to watch, Bear, but I, I wish you the best of luck in that one. So, uh, <laughs> can't, can't imagine why. Yeah. Uh, all right, what's your best bet for the NFL? Well, I alluded to it with Survivor. Yes. Well, with the uh, Lions and the Ravens, and I like the Ravens this week, laying the three That's good spot. Against, against the Lions. I know, I know you're coming home from london and a kind of an ugly win where if you bet the over in that game last week like if anybody out there had the ravens uh, titans over if you had the the seahawks plus the points yeah. and if you had the patriots plus the points that's a slip i want to see next <laughs> i want to i want to give you a big virtual hug because i feel i mean you yeah. talk about three three sides that were absolutely the right sides yes. and you didn't win any of them but but back to this week, like I I think the Ravens here coming home and, and now the Lions kind of have that dog with fleas kind of look to them. Injuries are mounting up. I think the Montgomery loss uh, is, is a big deal. And the Ravens very easily could be They're six and good, oh. Yeah. It, it 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 never like looks easy, it That's never looks fun, it never looks enjoyable. But but you look up at the end of the game, and more yeah. often than not, the Ravens emerge victorious. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take the short home favorite here with the with the Ravens and, uh, and <laughs> well you're laughing I'm laughing because the the thing you mentioned about the Ravens games just always look difficult like they never it's just it's always sort of it's always like, a chore it's like it looks hard even though I think they're playing very well if they just can catch the football like if they catch the football oh. they would and but here's what a good spot I think to take um, to really fade a Lions team and buy on the Ravens right the Lions are back on the road again. They're back outside again. Again, everyone's praising. Sort of like the Niners thing last week, right? Everyone's praising them. We're talking Jared Goff MVP. And, Dan, and Dan Sammy Campbell. brought it up, by the way, yeah. on, on, about what the, the teams that they have beaten. Yeah. And they're playing. The Ravens are really good, is my point, I think, on this one. So I, I'm, I'm with you on this one. I'm going to go for my best bet um, to a fate of Arizona. It is seven and a half. Seattle's fair by seven and a half. Hoping to get seven. Not there anymore, but seven and a half. This might even climb to eight or eight and a half. But Seattle minus seven and a half here, uh, mostly because last weekend we both watched that game. Seattle should come out there with a victory. The red zone offense was not very good. They played very well otherwise. Geno Smith did not play very well. I expect him to, to bounce back. But more than anything else, this is the fate of Arizona. 
Arizona was fun for three weeks, right? They were they were winning the first half in Washington. They were they were uh, they, they were twenty eight nothing against the Giants. Beat the Cowboys. Since then, they've lost three straight weeks. Haven't covered in three straight weeks, and they've lost by double digits in in in, in three straight weeks. They're just they're the team we thought they would be, right? They're one and five. They're not playing good football. And Seattle needs a win. They're back at home. Arizona back on the road. Bear. I'm just fading Arizona in this spot. I think Arizona sort of they they've reached their ceiling and they're going downwards. And we 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 hit on that in, in the chat as well. Like yeah. they, they, their win total is still at four and a half. Like how are they? They're winning four more games this year. I don't think so. I mean, the, the Kyler Murray thing is interesting. If he Why does come back, I, I have I have made the, the point that I don't think he plays this season because I, I don't really understand the point of him playing this year. Um, but he's back at practice supposedly. The, the, the window to the window to practice is, is three weeks, um, and um, he's uh, he's back at practice. We so we tweeted out. I wouldn't play him. I would stink as bad as possible, and um, get another quarterback. Honestly, that's, that, that that that's what I would do. And. But maybe there's a thought that the that the, the the new coaching staff maybe wants to see him play in in their Good. offense, and doesn't doesn't hurt anyone if he plays. Maybe trade value increases if he plays. But that might change the win total. But they're not they're not good. No, defensively they they have they trade away everybody. This is what they, this is what they were supposed to be. They were right. supposed to play like this right. the last three weeks. That was what we thought they would right. be. They beat the Cowboys. They play well against the Giants, who stink too. So being up against the Giants is not Giants something stink. great. Yeah. When when do we get to watch the Giants in prime time again? I think next week. Giants Jets is next week. I think. No, it's not. Is it? I think it is. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> I think it's next week, like Monday night. <laughs> no, no, no. What? No, 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 no. What no. is it? No, they they they're it's a one o'clock game. Oh, I thought there was a Giants Jets national TV game. No, well, maybe no. it is. No, maybe not then. Actually, oh good, this is good. We only it looks like the, we only one have more one. We have we have it. We got oof, Giants Packers. Oof. No, not not is for a, the is, is a, a Daniel Mo- Jones looks like uh, a Monday not Monday night game. Daniel Jones Jordan Love. No. Someone who played for the Giants, man. Those, the, 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 you know, the primetime games, man. People watch them. People watch the Giants play. New York's the biggest media market yeah. out there. Well, before we get out of here, just want to remind you guys, not too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for Week 7. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. You go to foxsports.com and read your your article for Super 6. I, I, I was pretty good last week. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thumbing through right now. What would the outcome of the Niners-Browns be? Uh, I, I said Browns lose by six or fewer or win the game. Which quarterback will have the most pass completions? I'm not sure if it wound up being C.J. Stroud, but that's who I went with. C.J. Stroud, by the way, kind of good Cooper Cup player. had the most receiving yards yeah. uh, out of all those. Uh, which team will allow the fewest points? Uh, I, I think I think we nail that one. Okay. And uh, Raheem Mostert, I, I think was the um, was was the was the, was the, the guy that I had with a chain out. Outcome of the Eagles Jets game. Uh, Eagles win by uh, oh, six or fewer. No, I said Jets oh, lose Jets. by six, okay. or six or fewer. So I'm not sure if I got the order right in all of them, but uh, there you go. Check uh, it out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. well, uh, and your column is going to be up there soon. Column, column will be up there uh, probably at some point. And you're flying over the uh, the it, country. It, it, maybe I'll, I'll work. I'll work on that. Well, yeah. I'll, have, I'll have worked on it by now. But yeah, it'll, it'll be up. It'll be up definitely by Friday night, Saturday morning. Yeah, and you have sure. hopefully had Arby's by then. No, 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 no. Columbus, no. Columbus is a um, no Arby's, no Arby's in Columbus. But we're we're gonna do either. Gonna, I'll be quite honest. I'm 37 years old. I don't think I've ever had an Arby's. Like I said, I haven't had it in th- a little. I haven't I had like it in literally three. It, we used to have an Arby's and a Roy Rogers back by the house when, when growing up. So, the Roy Rogers double R bar was that. That was a good burger. How do we not sponsor by some sort of food? Company? I know. Look, yeah, how are? Yeah, exactly. If you want, if you want two guys sponsor, yeah. sponsor. That's this is what do us. us. Yeah, let's bring the food to us. We give me food. a give me a White Castle twenty sack or something, <laughs> White, or, buddy. Hey, <laughs> uh, Bear Bets podcast, yeah, including yeah, yeah, food. I was gonna say, in, in coming up, we'll we'll preview Bear's trips to Turk and Caicos, review where to stay, and all providentialities. <laughs> And we, 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 food, food, football, and travel. Oh, I love it. That's it. Yeah. Kind of a, a crab cakes I mean, and football for Maryland. Do, I don't do anything else. What, is, is there anything else to do? No. That's exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. And that is it. Another week in the books. Hopefully, we can get on the right side of those coin flip games this week. I hope so, too. Group chat was fun. Oh, that's, that's for Sammy and Will. For Jeff. 
I'm Bear. Thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading. Make sure you rate, review, subscribe, uh, wherever you consume all of your podcasts and digital media. And if you remember one thing, you take one thing away from Bear Bets Podcast each week. Remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.